Hello everybody, I hope you are having a fantastic day. One of the things that can ruin your retro computing day is the whole thing that I call the chicken and the egg problem. So one of the things you might run into is that you might want to install Windows 95, Windows 98, Windows ME, DOS on something like this. And uh, the problem is you can't boot to a floppy drive because you don't have one or it doesn't work. And then all of a sudden you can't put a CD-ROM drive in it to boot that way. You can't put a USB in it because it doesn't have it. And so you just sort of run into all these different things where you start building virtual machines and all kinds of crazy stuff to just get the machine up and running. Well, I have a better way. For the longest time, I used to use these compact flashcards and uh, they were good, but they're expensive and they're getting harder to come by. And these things are just rebadged uh, commercial cards that have been around for like 30 years. This thing is probably 30 years old. You can just see they stuck a new label on it and, uh, and called it a two big gig card and that's about it. So I have switched basically exclusively and I didn't think that they would work as well as they did, um, but I have switched almost exclusively to these little um, SD to IDE readers. And in fact, I made my own enclosure. I'll share the link with you. This one could be printed a little bit better, but I made my own enclosure, biased it way over here to the side so that I could put the power cord this way and go down down or go out the back or whatever but uh, something like this you put a standard SD card which is readily available or even a micro SD with an adapter and then your IDE cable and you are up and running but that still doesn't solve your boot problem. Now I will say before we get started that I'm a big fan of uh, buying legitimate SanDisk Ultra cards. You can buy whatever size you want. These are 32s. They seem to be fine for most things I'm doing, but you can definitely get bigger ones uh, for this. And so uh, I tend to use these because they're quality and they work well and work fast and all that. But the question is, how do you get Windows 98 on here and actually install it. And so the problem is you can't just clone one because the hardware will be different and the thing will just crash. So you actually do need to install it on the machine that you are using. And so I have a better way and I'm gonna go over to the computer and show you. So some kind soul over at archive.org uploaded this, and I think this thing is an absolute game changer. This is an SD card image with DOS 7.1, which gives you FAT32 and allows you to use bigger drives, drives bigger than eight gigabytes, uh, Windows 95, Windows 98, and ME on the actual image itself. Now you can torrent it or download the zip. I'm gonna go ahead and click this, download the zip, and I'll come right back. All right, so once you have the image, uh, I don't actually know if you need to unzip it, you might not, but uh, you just click here and hit flash from file, and then you're gonna take the image that you downloaded and put it in here. And from there, you're going to select your target, which is gonna be your SD card. And I've got this 32 gig card here, select that and hit flash. And about two minutes later, you got yourself an SD card. So what makes this so special is that you've got all the files you need on a bootable SD card, but they're not installed. So you can actually install them on your own machine. You're not trying to get these files over there or anything like that. This actually contains Windows 95, 98, and ME. And uh, you've got the bulk of the DOS files that you at least need uh, to get started. You've got your F disk and your format and all that kind of stuff. We'll, we'll all just work uh, with this as well as your CD-ROM drivers and the ability to SYS, which is make other drives bootable. So that is pretty sweet. As you can see here, we have the drive just formatted to two gigs and uh, half of that's free. So I guess this image probably could be shrunk down even more. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and expand that while we still have the computer uh, up and running. So there are a ton of different ways to do this. Um, my favorite tool by far is Mini Tool Partition Wizard Free 12.8. They've got a pro version, but uh, all you need is the free version for this. There's no real annoyances or anything like that with it, but we can come down here and we can right click our partition and hit extend and we can just whip that over there like this. And all of a sudden our drive will be 32 gig. You need to make sure that you hit uh, apply and yes. And in just a couple of seconds, you will have a 32 gig partition with all that stuff on there. All right, and once you get the message that all the applied changes have been successful, you can go ahead and eject the SD card and bring it over to the computer. All right, I wanna go over a couple of notes of hooking these things up. First of all, um, you don't have to use something like a five and a quarter inch adapter. You can use one that'll go in a slot. I like this design. There's also a reverse version that puts the power down the bottom. Um, speaking of power, there's some things you need to know. Uh, first of all, the board can technically sometimes power itself over the IDE, and that could actually be problematic if you have a couple of them in there. Um, you may think unplugging the power will just disconnect the drive, but you could accidentally still be using this drive. I've run into that once where something was booted and I thought that there was no way it could be, but sure enough, the uh, IDE cable gave it power. Um, you can use the Molex connector, but 
it will stick up higher and take up more space. So the Berg connector for the floppy is kind of my preferred way to do it. Um, these things also aren't labeled pin one and you might not have the little notch on your thing here. So just like most IDE hard drives, the um, red stripe goes toward the power connector. Now, if your power supply does not have the connector that you want, there are a couple of options and uh, I'm gonna show you the worst one first. Um, anytime you get these things new, the um, Molex connectors you can see here, uh, just wiggles all around and it makes it super easy to push out the back. So if you're gonna get an adapter like this, I highly recommend um, you know, just gently getting it all lined up. And then I actually fill the back of this with hot glue so that these things can't push out. You don't have a problem on the Berg side. You always have a problem on the freaking Molex side. We'll just ruin your day. I mean, like it can take 30 minutes to get one plugged in. Um, if you're using a more modern power supply, now these connectors get a bad rap for powering things that are really power hungry, but that's not the issue here. Um, you can use the SATA to Berg adapter. And as you can see, these are chunkier wires and stuff like that. So I do like the idea of using a SATA to, uh, to Berg connector if you need to adapt to a more modern power supply. But we've got the one that we need. So we're just going to plug it in and I'm gonna get everything hooked up. I did realize uh, just as I was sitting here, this Cyrex fan is horrifically loud. So I'm probably gonna go ahead and swap this fan out at least temporarily and then we'll hook it up. Now, one thing to note is if you see all three of these LEDs on solid, that means that your cable is in backwards. So you'll wanna reverse that. Um, but this one's good. We've only got two on, which is what we wanna see. And as you can see, we are booting Founder AMD 233. We can skip that memory test and see if it finds the SD card. And yes, it does. Found it in the secondary master. Probably should have put it in primary master, but who cares? We're gonna boot. Uh, yeah, I didn't have, I didn't disable the floppy drive, so let's go ahead and move forward. And voila, you've got a DOS prompt. That is DOS 7.1, which is important because if you wanna use FAT32 in bigger uh, partitions, that's what you're gonna need. So now at this point, you can see if I do a DIR, we have DOS, Windows ME, Windows 98, and Windows 95 does take a while to get that first uh, directory size. All you have to do now is type in setup. And you will see that this is probably the fastest uh, Windows 95 setup you'll ever see. Now, if you don't have your Windows 95 key on your actual computer itself, you can find it at places like archive.org and WinWorld PC and stuff like that. But I'm just gonna go ahead and go through this process and get everything installed. So the original reason why I originally used uh, compact flash cards was that the compact flash is basically the same as the IDE standard. So you had a lot better compatibility back in the day. But uh, these SD card readers in particular have come such a long way that I won't go back to Compact Flash as far as I can tell. Um, I will have a link to this and all the other stuff in the description. Uh, there's also some other versions of the SD card that I may do some videos about, uh, but this one will get you up and running with anything FAT32 basically, and uh, just get you up and running quick. So I hope you found this helpful and uh, yeah, have a great day.